My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 128. Day 3128. Three is to signify the fact that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 128. We'll do problem number 16. Problem number 16 that you will find on page number on page number 322. On page number 322. These problems that you see on page number 322, 321, and 320. As a matter of fact, the story begins with page number 317. Beginning from page number 317 through page number 322, or rather 23, all of these problems that you see there with data analysis exercises, I did not do them in order. They, are, they were not done in order. So I put here a schedule here so that it makes it easier for you to find it. Very quickly, let's go through them. These are, these are the problem data analysis exercises that you will find on page number 320. Problem number 11 through 15, problems dealing with the topic of probability, were done from day number 101, from 3101 to day 3115. There are 15 videos, even though there are only 5 problems, there are 15 videos because there are many more problems that we did that were not in the book, not in the book dealing with the topic of probability. Then we moved on and we picked up problem number 6 through 10, dealing with the topic of permutation and combination from day number 116 through 120. And this is the second half of the topic of permutation and combination, 6 through 10. Uh, the day 6 through 10, the first five video, day 1 through uh, 1 to 5, were done earlier. There are altogether 10, 10 lessons on the topic of permutations and combinations. Then we moved on to page number 317, 318, and 319, where there are three examples, example 4.6.1 to 4.6.3, with the those with these these three problems on day number 3121 through 123. And then finally we did problem number one through five on page number 320, problem number one through five from day 3124 to 27. That was the yesterday. We just did problem number five yesterday and today we're going to pick up problem number 16. Today we'll do 16 and 17. We'll do 16 and 17 today on day number 328. Tomorrow we'll do day number uh, problem number 18. And finally, the day after tomorrow we'll do problem number 19, the very last problem in the book. And by day after tomorrow, we will have finished the entire book. Uh, all, the, all the math problems that we set out to do, we will have finished all of them in day, by day after tomorrow in 130 lessons, in 130 days. Let's get going. Enough of this. Enough said. Problem number 16 on page number 322. Please turn to the book and make sure that the book is, book is in front of you so that, you, that, so that it makes it easier for you to follow the work. It says that the height of the population, height of the population of 3,000 penguins are approximately normally distributed. Approximately normally distributed. It's a normal distribution. And we covered the topic of normal distribution on day number 90. Day 3,090. And if not that, if you're ever... If you're ever interested, if you're ever curious about any particular topic that appears in the GRE, just type in the name of the topic and my name, just type in normal distribution and then Keshwani and just search for it and the video will pop right up. Not only this video, but all the other ones that, you have done, that I've done in the past from the first and the second edition. You understand? So it's a normal distribution with a mean of 65 and a standard deviation of 5. So let's draw the normal distribution with the mean of 65 and a standard deviation of 5 before you worry about what the questions, what questions are being asked. We need the rule, so I'm going to raise this thing. We don't want to read it. It's very simple. We know it's a normal distribution. And we know, let's raise all of this thing, we need the room. And we know that uh, mean, is, mean is 65 and the standard deviation is 5. And this is something you have to know. This is something they expect you to know, what a normal distribution is and how, how it looks like. First of all, obviously, it's symmetric. If we move one standard deviation in either direction, this is the mean. If we move one standard deviation in either direction, in either direction, we know that we're going to capture 34% of the population in either direction. 34% of the population. Here, we are told that the mean is 65. 
We also told that the standard deviation, we were told, the standard deviation is 5 cm. Which means if you go 5 cm this way, it's going to be 70. This is, this, these are height in centimeter. Do you understand? And if you go 5 cm the other way, one standard deviation below the mean, we approach 60 cm. So I'm not going to write centimeter everywhere. If we go one more standard deviation away from the mean, one standard one, two standard deviation above the mean, we are at 75. And by the time we get there, from first standard deviation to second standard deviation, we'll capture another 14%. It's not that difficult to memorize, it's not difficult difficult to know, it's 34 and 14, it can be simpler than that. Similarly, if you go one, one, one standard deviation, one more standard deviation below the mean, in, in other words, if we move two standard deviation below the mean, this is mean, one standard deviation, two standard deviation will be at 55, and we will have captured under 14%. So far so good, the rest is very simple. If we add up 34 and 14, we get 48, and since this is symmetric, Half the population is to the right, half the population is to the left. If the half the population is to the right, it must be 50%. 50% of the observations are to the right of the mean, 50% of the observations are to the left of the mean, because it's symmetric. Whatever you see here is the mirror image of what you're going to see on the other side. So 34 plus 14 is 48, which means the tail must contain 2%. This is typically known as simply as the tail. The two tails, the two tails capture 2%. Let's answer the first question, shall we? The first question says approximately how many, approximately how many, approximately how many penguins are going to be between the heights of, and I'm not going to write all of that down, approximately how many penguins will be between the heights of, between the heights of 65 centimeter and 75 centimeter. Out of, out of 900 penguins that they that they studied, oh sorry, 3,000 rather, not, not, not 900, out of 3,000 penguins that we studied, we measured their heights, and we have a normal distribution based on our observation. Question now is approximately how many of them are going to be between the height of 65 and 70? Let's take a look at it where 65 and 70 fall. 65 and 70, well, we know the mean, is, the mean is 65. So one standard deviation is 70. It's very simple. From between 65 and 70, the normal distribution tells us that we should have... Does it say 70 or 75? It says 75, not 70. It says 75. Because I just realized that what I did in the note does not agree with what I was showing you. So we have to go one more standard deviation. From 65 to 70, we capture one standard deviation. And we have to go to 75. We have to go up to here from 65 and 70. So one more time. From 65 to 70, because... Six because 5 is the standard deviation, therefore from 65 to 70, we'll capture 34% of the population. And from 70 to 75, we'll capture another 14% of the population. 34 plus 14 is 48. You can look at it that way, that from mean to 2 standard deviation is 48. Or you can simply understand the fact that above the 2 standard deviation, we only capture 2%. If 2% if of the populations are captured above the second mean, which means we must have 48% between the mean and the 2 standard deviation because it's 50 minus 2. All we have to figure out is, all we have to figure out is, what is 48% of 3,000 or 9,000? Of 3,000. That's all it is. That's all they're asking. What is 48% of 3,000? Or can we do it? I left no room at all for myself, uh, for, for, for me. So 48% of 3,000. Let's do, let's do it right here. I'm going to raise a little bit so, so I don't have to go down. So that's what we have to figure out. 48% of 3,000. Let's do it very quickly. Let's do it very quickly. We know, we know that 50%, we know that 50% of 3,000 is, is going to be 1,500. We also know that 1% of 3,000, 1% of 3,000, we just drop the two zeros, it's going to be 30. Another 1% of 3,000. This is something you should, you should be able to see from just by looking at it. We shouldn't have to write everything down in the real exam. Do you understand? 1% is 30. And therefore, if you subtract 1% from 50%, you're going to have 49%. If you subtract one more, you're going to have 48%. So, therefore, therefore 48% must equal 60 minus 1500 minus 60. 1500 minus 60 is 1440. 1440. That's it. We could have done it this way. Or we could have simply multiplied the two out 
we're looking for 48% of 1500. Let's do it right here. 48% of 1500. Is that what it is? No, 48% of 3000 makes, makes the math even simpler. 48% of 3000. 1500 actually is the 50%. We want it 48% of 3,000. Let's do it up here. 48% of, of 3,000. 8 3's are 24. 4. Carry 2. 4 3's are 12. Plus 2 is 14, you see. And then you have to understand what we did here. What we have, what we, this is a quick way of doing it. And you have to understand that that number actually is 1,440. And it's very simple. There are two ways, again, to look at it. You simply have to understand that, that half of 3,000 is 1,500. If half of 3,000 is 1,500, then 48% must be very close, something very close to 1,500, which means it's 1,440. That's one way of looking at it. Or, or understand what we, what we did here mathematically. Let me rewrite this 3 so we can see it properly. Or, or, to, or to understand what we did mathematically here. Here's what we did. Okay, watch, listen carefully and understand. That 3 is not actually 3. It's actually 3,000. We left out 3 zeros. We ignored the 3 zeros. And that 48 is not 48, it's supposed to be 48%. If it's 48%, it should have been 0.48. So watch what happens. So we ignored, we ignored three digits going to the right, didn't we? And we ignored two digits going to the left. What's the net effect? If we ignore three digits going to the right and two digits going to the left, the net, net effect is that we have to go one digit to the right to compensate for this thing that we did which is exactly what we did. If the answer was 144, we have to go one more digit to the right and therefore the zero. Do you understand? All right, let's do the next problem. Enough of that. Let's do the next problem. I was about to erase everything. It's a good thing I caught myself. Second problem says, second problem says very quickly, it says that if you were to pick one penguin, I'm not going to put everything on the blackboard. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to write everything on the blackboard. Make sure the book is in front of you. Part B says, if one, peng if one penguin is chosen at random, if you were to choose one penguin at random, what are the odds that the height of that penguin will be less than 60 centimeter? This is part B. What are the odds that the height of a randomly chosen penguin is going to be less than 60 centimeter? That's what we're looking for. Again, let's look at our normal distribution that we have here. Where do we find less than 60 centimeter? Less than 60 centimeter, this is 60 centimeter. This is demarcation of less than 60 centimeter. And what percentage of the population falls below 60 centimeters? Right here, 14% and 2%. 16% of the population, 16% of the population falls below 60 centimeter. And that's it, we're done. What are the odds that if you were to pick one penguin at random, that its height is gonna be less than 60 centimeter? The answer is 14 plus 2. The answer is the odds are 16%. The odds are 16%. But we can't stop here because in the GRE you must always pay attention to us. You, we must always pay attention to us attention to, to as to how they want us to express the answer. They want it to the nearest 100, or they want it to the nearest tenth, or they want it to the nearest one hundredth or one hundred, or they want it to the nearest five or nearest whatever it is that they're looking for. Here they say it, it goes on to say give the answer give the answer to nearest point zero five in other words first of all they wanted to express the answer in decimal not in percentage these are these are particularly important where we have to put our own answers in there are no answers there we have to type in our own answers we have to make sure we have to make sure that we type in the right answer otherwise all this work that you did will be all for naught do you understand so the nearest 0 0.05, the nearest 0 0.05 to 16 is 0.15. The nearest 5%, because it's 16%, 10% is too far. 20% uh, is obviously is too high. It's 15%. Do you understand? Make sure you pay attention and make sure you answer the questions the way they are they are speculated, the, the way they command us to. Otherwise, as I said before, it would have been all for naught. It would have been all for naught. N A U G H T. It would have been all for naught. It's a vocabulary word we learned long time ago in our vocabulary lessons. I'm going to very quickly take time, a couple of seconds, to tell you which day we learned it. Make sure you work on your vocabulary. It is vital, it is important, it is essential, it is absolutely crucial that not only you work on the math, but also on the vocabulary because that is the second half of the exam, isn't it? So you mustn't ignore it. 
Day number 74. Vocabulary. Day 74. Just type in just type in GRE vocabulary words. This is that's what you're gonna type in, in the in the search box. GRE vocabulary words, day 74. The video will pop right up. You don't have to put in my name, just type in GRE Vocabulary Words Day 74. It will pop right up. Watch the video, learn the word. Let's do the next problem. Problem number 17. We're done with all of this thing. Problem number 17. In problem number 17, in problem number 17, we have Actually, what we have actually in the book, if you if you have the book in front of you, which I hope that you do, if you have the book in front of you, you will see that what we have actually there is a chart, a, 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 a graph actually, a bar graph. They do not give us the data, they simply give us the bar graph. But I'm going to give you first the data and then we'll plot the graph ourselves. Do you understand? So here's number 17, we're given the year and we're given the total expenditure, total expenditure for the, for the given year. Here's the year, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, year 2000, and 2001. And the total expenditures are given in billions of dollars. In billions of dollars. In year, year 1995, the total expenditure were 95 billion. Then we had 100 billion. Then we had 115 billion. Then we had 135 billion then 140 billion, then 150 billion, and finally 160 billion. And now since we need the room, I'm going to help you erase all of this thing. You have it, take it down. Even though we don't have to do any of this thing in the exam because it is given, the chart is given to us, it doesn't hurt to get a little extra practice of drawing a, a bar graph. So let's plot it based on these figures. Let's plot it. We need a room. Perhaps we can squeeze here. Why not? Let's see if we can squeeze it here. The years are going to be tough. So here is the expenditure. Here is the expenditure. On the y-axis. On the y-axis is the expenditure. And here is the year which is going to be a bit tough but we'll, we'll, we'll manage it. From 95 and expenditure we're not going to start with zero. We are going to start with zero. We'll figure out in a second where we're going to start from because the story begins with 95. So we're not going to go from the zero. We're going to probably start with uh, 90. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. So the first the year from 95 to 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001. Very good. So here's 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, year 2000 and 2001 it stops here we're not going to use that one okay, let's do very quickly okay so if we're going to start from 90 so here we go 90 100 110 120 130 140 150 160 this is 160 140 120 100 and that's 90 let's see what we can do if you understand the bar graph, you will see that if we understand the bar graph and how to read and so forth, then the question that they're asking, we don't have to do anything at all. A lot of the times I find people sitting there doing calculation and wasting a lot of time to answer a question that, can, uh, to answer a question that should be answered by simple visual inspection. One simply looks at the graph and one answers it because the answer is right there staring in your face. You don't have to do any calculation at all. So let's plot it. In order for us to understand that, let's plot it. In 95, the expenditure was 95. In 95, the expenditure was 95. We are starting here at 90. This is 90. So 95 is right here. That's the first point. In 96, it was 100. 96, it was 100. It goes up to 100 right here. In 97, it's 115. This is 100. This is 110. This is 120. So 115 is going to be here. Then we had 135. This is 130. This is 140. 135 is going to be here the following year. Then we had 140 in 99. In 99 we had 140. It's going to be up here. And then, five, and then 2000 we had 150. 150 is right here. And the year 2000 is right here. 
and then and then 2001 and in 2001 it was 160 first thing we should notice is that first thing we should notice is that in the last three years in the last three years it went up by exactly 10,000 you see 140 to 1 140 to 150 150 to so these three observations should make a straight line because they have the same slope then we have this then there then here and then finally here let's see what the question is asking I'm, I'm again I'm going to read the question to you I'm not going to write it everything because we simply don't have the room it says in which year in which year did the total expenditure rise did the total expenditure increase the most from the year before it's very important in which year one more time in which year did the expenditure rise the most from the year before in other words we have to look in this graph we have to simply look at the segment where the slope is the steepest the steepest slope if you look at this figure here is from where is the steepest slope the steepest slope is here this is where the slope is the steepest right here this segment you see that can you are, are you able to see right away visually that the slope is the steepest in that segment this the steepest slope is from 97 to 98 but now the question is so what's the answer is so is the are they looking for 97 or are they looking for 98 and the answer to that question depends on how the word how the question is phrased so I'm going to read one more time to you verbatim how the question is phrased and then you tell me whether you should we should uh, pick 97 or 98 in which year in which year did the total expenditure increase the most from the year before it was in 1998 in the, it was in the 1998 that the expenditure increased the most from the year before from this year to that year that's when it ex this in 98 is the year when the expenditure increased the most from the year before the answer is 98 answer is 1998 answer is 1998 let's look at part b let's look at part b In part B it says, it says, let me read it to you, again I'm not going to write everything, it says for, for year 2001, it helps a great deal if you have the book in front of you as I keep repeating like a parrot, you must have the book in front of you, turn to page number 323 and read the problem to yourself, part B number 17. For 2001, the private school expenditures were what percent of the total expenditures? That's all. Okay, that's all it is. So we have to simply go to uh, go to 2001, look at the total expenditure, and then figure out uh, what what is it as a percentage of the total expenditure, the money that was spent by private school, which I have not given to you here. In the book, they gave you the expenditure for public school, private school, and total expenditure. I simply put down the total expenditure. I didn't give you the other two, so I'm going to give you the figures. So for 2000, for 2001. The private private school expenditure private school expenditure was what percent of total expenditure well if you look at the if you look at your book you will find that for private for the private school expenditure private school ex, private school expenditure in 2001 was 30 billion dollars and the total expenditure which is the expenditure done by the public school and private school the total combined public and private was 160 billion dollars 160 billion dollars so it's a very straightforward very simple question all they're asking here is after we have after we have finished uh, reading the graph which is the most important part here but after one reads the graph one realizes that all that is being asked here is 30 is what percent of 160 that's all they're asking because 30,000 rather 30 billion dollars was the amount of money that was spent by private school and the public school public school spent private school spent 30 billion dollars and public school spent 130 billion dollar for a total of 160 billion dollars so the question is 
30 is what percentage of 60? 30 is what percentage of rather 160, not 60. Had it been simply 30 is what percentage of 60, it would have been 200 percent. 30 is what percentage of 160? Let's do it up here. We don't need any of this anymore. This is 30 is what percent of 160? That's the question. So let's do it here. 30 is means equal. What is our unknown? Percent means over 100. Of means times 160. Let's isolate the x. Multiply both sides by 100. So we can end up with 160x equals 160x equals 30 times 100. And then divide both sides by 160. In other words, isolate the x. Divide by 160. Just divide top and bottom by 10. If you divide top and bottom by 10, the 0 goes away. And essentially what we're looking for is 300 divided by 16. That's what we're looking for. Let's find out what that is. 300 divided by 16, shall we? 300 divided by 16. Three hundred divided by sixteen. So we can't go two times. We can't go two times because two two sixteens are thirty-two. So we have to go one time. If we go one time, we get sixteen, and we're going to get a difference of one. We're going to get one forty. Going to get one forty. Let's bring the zero down, and we get one forty. One hundred forty. This. Now it cannot also listen very carefully. You have to understand it. You see the reason we could not go reason we could not write 2 here is because in order for us to, in order for us to be able to write 2, this middle finger, the 10th digit, should have been 2. In other words, we have 20 shorts. We have 20 shorts here. Since we have 20 shorts, we also cannot go 9 times. Because 9 times would require us to go, we have 20 shorts, not 16 shorts. Do you understand? 9 times is not going to work. For example, if you like, you can see 9 times is not going to work. 16 times 9 is going to be more than 140. It's going to be 4 more than 140 because we have 20 shorts. We have 20 shorts here. We're not less than 15, 16 shorts. 16 times 9. 9, 6 is 54. 4, carry 5. 9, 9 is a 9 plus 5 is 14. You see, we have 9 times it's not going to work. We knew that ahead of time. It's 8. It's 16 times 8. 6 is the 48. 6 is the 48. Carry 4. 4 and 12. 8 and 4 is 12. That's it. 140 minus 130 would have been 10. Therefore, 140 minus 128 would be, would be 8. Of course, it's going to be 8 because that's where it's going to come down. 8 is going to come down. 10 minus 8 is 8 and this becomes 3. So what's the answer? And how many times is that? That's 8 times. It's 8 times. So the answer is 14 and then with the remainder of 8, Remainder of 8, and that remainder of 8 has to be divided by, it can be remainder of 8, can it? It should be remainder of, this is wrong. 130, had it been 130, 140 minus 130 would have been 10, therefore 140 minus 128 would be 12. I'm not thinking. It's 12, remainder is 12. You know how I caught myself? Because I had written down 8 here, then the answer would have been 14 and 8, 16. 8, 16 is half. It's not 14 and a half percent. So it's 14 and remainder of 12, so it's 14 and 12, 16. 14 and 12, 16. Let's divide top and bottom by 4. If we divide top and bottom by 4, we end up with 14 and 3 quarters. 14 and 3 quarters. Or rather, 18, is 18 and 3 quarters. Right here is 18, sorry is 18 and 3 quarters or approximately 19 percent depending on how accurate they want us to be it's 19 percent approximately that is if the answer choices are all in whole numbers then of course we'll pick 19 percent but in reality we just found out it's 18 and 3 quarter percent why 3 quarter why 3 quarter can you tell why 3 quarter because what is the quarter what is the quarter of 16 Quarter of 16 is 4. Are you able to see that quarter of 16 is 4? It's 3 quarter because that's exactly how short we were. We were 4 short. Instead of being 140, had this figure, instead of being 140, had it been 144, 
we would have been able to we would have been able to go nine times instead of eight times. We we would have been able to go nine times because sixteen times mine we found out is one forty four. We were four short and four is one quarter of sixteen. Therefore, if we cannot go nine times, we can only go eight times. Eight, which makes it eighteen and three quarter. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow where we'll, where we'll do problem number 17. Or rather, problem number 18, the penultimate problem. Okay? Bye now.